Hello everyone, I'm Travis, and let's get Wanderlust. We recently sailed aboard Voyager of the Seas for a five-night Western Caribbean cruise. Voyager of the Seas is the third Voyager-class ship that we've sailed on after Navigator of the Seas and Adventure of the Seas. This cruise started in Galveston, Texas, which is about a five-hour drive from where we live. We arrived in Galveston the day before our cruise and decided to check out the sights. We took a walk from the Strand District where our hotel was all the way to the other side of the island to check out the Pleasure Pier. I had been talking about it for a couple months that I wanted to take Nicole to Bubba Gum Shrimp Company because she had never been before and I hadn't been since we lived in Orlando. I know what you're thinking. Who goes to Bubba Gump when you're on Galveston when there's so many good seafood restaurants? That's like going to France and eating at McDonald's or getting Starbucks coffee. I don't know who would do that. To be perfectly honest, the food at Bubba Gump's was actually pretty good, especially for a chain restaurant. I had the shrimp basket, Nicole had the stuffed shrimp, and we definitely re reordered what we had. We were going to walk along the water after we ate, but the weather was awful. It was super windy, and this was pretty much going to be a common occurrence during this trip. The wind was blowing so bad that I was struggling to even hold my phone up to take these videos. So we decided to walk, or pretty much run, back to the hotel on the other side of the island, and we were staying at the Tremont House in the Strand District. We've stayed at the Tremont House before for other cruises that we've taken, and it's one of my favorite pre-cruise hotels. The Tremont House actually offers a park and sail package if you book on the Marriott Bonvoy website or app, which is what we did. The park and sail package is a $100 add-on to your room fee, and it basically covers 10 days of cruise parking and transportation to and from the port. We were upgraded to a one-bedroom king suite, and this room was definitely awesome. The main living room area was very comfortable and excellent for just relaxing before the cruise, and the bedroom was super comfortable. I don't even remember falling asleep. The bed was that good. Like a big, fluffy cloud. I lay down, and within five minutes, I was pretty much out. I didn't wake up until the morning when we had to get ready. From the service, to the room, to the food on site, the Tremont House has a lot going for it. It is definitely one of our favorite pre-cruise hotels, and I would recommend it over just about every hotel on Galveston Island. For dessert that night, we walked around the corner to La King's Confectionery and got some ice cream. La King's is a staple in the Strand District on Galveston Island. It is definitely worth a visit. The ice cream tasted homemade. It tasted something like my grandmother would make. I loved it. I had the lemon custard. I definitely recommend it. The next morning for breakfast, we had actually gotten some donuts from Tim Hortons in Houston. My family is originally from Western New York, and when I heard there was Tim Hortons in Houston, I was both confused and excited. So we definitely had to stop on the way to Galveston to pick up some donuts and some drinks. The next morning we packed up our suitcases, went down to the lobby, and met the shuttle bus that would take us to the port to get on the ship. The Tremont House shuttle drops you off right at the ship and the brand new Royal Caribbean terminal at Galveston. If you didn't know, Royal Caribbean recently built a new terminal in Galveston. It's down the street from the old terminal and a much, much better experience uh, getting on the ship than what you're probably used to on Galveston. Everything at this terminal is brand new and up to date with the best technology. We were super impressed by it. It is probably, no not probably, definitely the best terminal that we've gone through at any of the ports where we've taken a Royal Caribbean cruise. This includes Seattle, any of the places in Florida, and in Europe. If you're booked in a suite or are a Pinnacle member, you can actually go to the right when you walk into the terminal and go up the stairs. There's actually a special priority embarkation line that actually leads to a special suite lounge where you can wait before you can get on the ship. The suite lounge is very comfortable. It actually has a coffee and snack station, so if you're hungry or thirsty, you can get something there. Basically, you wait here so they can scan your passports and make sure you're completely ready to get on the ship. 
After a short wait in the Sweet Lounge, you can actually just walk right onto the ship. The Sweet Lounge has its own gangway, which leads you right onto Deck 4 for your cruise. Now I say this in just about every single video, there is nothing better than Embarkation Day. Doesn't matter what type of vacation you're taking, it could be to a theme park like Disney or Universal, or going hiking in the mountains, or going to an all-inclusive resort. There is simply nothing as exciting as walking across that gangway and taking those first steps onto the ship and getting your vacation started. The best type of vacation. As I said earlier, this is our third Voyager class ship after Navigator of the Seas and Adventure of the Seas. Voyager is the oldest Voyager class ship and was released in 1999. As the first impressions of the ship, you can tell that Voyager of the Seas is one of the older Voyager class ships. The art and design and overall decor of the ship is a little bit dated compared to some of the newer ships in the Royal Caribbean fleet. You can also tell that Voyager of the Seas went through one of the more recent amplification remodels back in early 2020 before the shutdown. There's a mixture of modern type shops and decor with the older later 90s early 2000s vibe of the original setup of Voyager of the Seas. The ship is incredibly easy to navigate, besides some of the upper levels where you can tell they added additional staterooms and kind of moved some stuff around from the early days of the ship. The only downside with Voyager is it does feel a little bit hodgepodgey with different types of updates mixed in with the older stuff, and it feels like it's just missing things. Like there isn't a Playmakers on the promenade, there isn't a quick service type restaurant like El Loco Fresh. There's no Johnny Rockets. It's missing a, something that would make it a little bit better compared to, say, Navigator or Mariner of the Seas. But overall, it has a good vibe. It looks like a good ship. And we were impressed from the get-go with Voyager of the Seas. As you can see in this video, we are doing the safety briefing or the mustard station as soon as we got on the ship. Make sure you do this because the ship cannot leave port until everybody has. Watch a couple videos in the app and then go find your muster station. Ours was in the main dining room. And then they'll scan your C-Pass card and you'll be good to go. As is pretty common with our bookings on this cruise, I got the soda package and Nicole got the refreshment package because we really don't drink that much alcohol. Nicole loves her coffee and espressos and I like soda so it, it works out. One thing to be mindful with on Voyager of the Seas is there is no Coke freestyle machine, so if you want a soda, you do need to go to a bar and ask one of the bartenders to give you one. If you've ever booked a cruise out of Galveston, Texas, there's one thing you should know, especially if you have the deluxe beverage package, is that there's a limited menu until you get more than 12 nautical miles outside of Texas waters. And this is for some Texas laws around alcohol sales. But don't worry, you can still order drinks and the menu isn't that bad. Let's move on to our stateroom. We booked a sweet guarantee on cruise.com and we were assigned room 1640, which is a junior suite on deck 10. We wanted to book a suite on Voyager of the Seas for a couple different reasons. The first one is kind of selfish. We were 10 points away from diamond status with crown and anchor. And with double points when you book a suite, that pretty much got us there on this five day cruise. The other reasons were we booked Adventure of the Seas back in 2022 and we had a promenade view interior room and it just wasn't all that comfortable, so while booking another Voyager class, especially an older one, we wanted a larger room that we were hoping would be a lot more comfortable. With the couch, two chairs, and a more comfortable bed, we got just that. We also got additional room in the larger room for our suitcases and stuff, especially with a large walk-in closet. And of course, the larger balcony, so Nicole could sit out there and read her books and just enjoy the Caribbean or the Yucatan 
warm air as we escape from cold, cold Texas. The last reason was to kind of see what a suite was like on an older ship that did not have the sea, sky, and star class designations like the Quantum and Oasis and Icon class ships have. If you didn't know, and you're used to booking, say, some of the newer Royal Caribbean ships, the older ships do not get as many suite perks as some of the newer ships do. So when you book a junior suite on an Oasis class ship, you get Coastal Kitchen, which is an amazing restaurant. There is no Coastal Kitchen on the older ships, so you don't get that perk. You still get the espresso maker, the larger room, and the larger balcony and a priority embarkation, and that's kind of it. Overall, we like the room besides the hot water situation. You can also watch our room tour on our channel, which was posted before this video. One of the really cool things about Galveston and sailing out of Galveston is you can actually see quite a few dolphins. Each time that we've sailed out of Galveston, we've stood on our balcony or on the top deck and just watched the dolphins play near the harbors. There's a ton of them, almost as many dolphins as there was when we sailed out of Los Angeles on Navigator of the Seas. So make sure you grab your binoculars and your cameras and then kind of check out the water near the harbor area. You'll definitely see some dolphins jumping out of the water and it's one of those can't miss things about sailing out of Galveston, especially in the earlier months of the year. One of the other things that I really like about sailing out of Galveston, and this was similar to sailing out of Los Angeles, is the Warship Museum right at the edge of the Galveston Harbor. Make sure you're on the deck or on your balcony as you're leaving. You'll check out the submarine and the battleship that are out there. Let's move into talking about the entertainment options aboard Voyager of the Seas. As with some of the other ships in the Royal Caribbean fleet, they do do a parade down the promenade, it's unfortunately anchors away again, which is on several different Royal Caribbean ships. Really hope they change it up eventually. Voyager has two stage shows. One is Broadway, Rhythm and Rhyme, and the other one is Music and Pictures. I would say these two shows are kind of just okay, kind of average. Not what you would find on an Oasis class ship for sure. On this sailing of Voyager of the Seas, there was actually two headliner acts. The first one was a magician, and as soon as I heard that, I was like, please don't let it be Jamie Allen. If you watched our Odyssey of the Seas videos, you understand how much I do not like Jamie Allen. But fortunately for me, it was Ed Alonzo. Ed Alonzo used to be on Saved by the Bell. He's toured with Britney Spears and Michael Jackson. The show was actually really good and it was funny as well. I enjoyed it. I was so glad it wasn't Jamie Allen. Ed Alonzo did a really good job. The other headliner act was a comedian. His name was Greg Brent. You may know him as one of the writers of that book and the movie, He's Just Not That Into You. He's also did a little bit of consulting work for Sex and the City. I've seen his comedy acts a bunch kind of on TV and stuff. He's does a lot of the same jokes you would if you were just to Google Greg Brent um, and watch his specials online. But it was a good show. He did a really good job. He's super funny. Now, as I said earlier, the stage shows on Voyager of the Seas are kind of just okay, but I'm happy to say the ice skating show, Odyssey, is a real gem, and you should definitely check it out. We went to two different showings of this ice skating show, and usually I get kind of bored during these, and Nicole just absolutely loves them, but it kept my interest, and I really liked it. It's almost as good as the show on Oasis of the Seas, so I definitely give this my recommendation. Check it out, it's really good. All right, now for what everybody does cruises for is the food. Is the food any good on Voyager of the Seas? Now we'll start in the Windjammer, which is the buffet aboard Voyager of the Seas. And I will say we had some decent meals in the Windjammer. We ate here for usually breakfast and lunch, and then maybe stopped in here when the food or our meal wasn't as good in the main dining room. 
Uh, my favorite meal here was the Asian night when they had dumplings. And after that, it's pretty basic cruise buffet food. It's not gonna win any awards, but it, it, it was definitely good. I, I wouldn't call it bad at all. It was definitely worth going to. I recommend getting to the Windjammer when you first open or right before it closes. That's usually when the least amount of people are there and you can score one of those nice window seats near the back of the ship. Now we've been on a lot of Royal Caribbean cruises and we've never seen this before. It's Ensaymada bread and it's from the Philippines. I grabbed one as a joke for Nicole because she doesn't really try new foods and it was really good. So if you see that bread on any of your Royal Caribbean cruises, make sure you grab one and try it out. I cannot wait to have another one on one of our next cruises. So hopefully they're on there. Now moving on to the main dining room. We ate in the main dining room on every night of our cruise. We did not purchase a dining package for this cruise. Voyager of the Seas only has four specialty restaurants and we just didn't feel the money was worth it just to go to those four restaurants every night. So the main dining room it was. The service and the food in the main dining room were pretty good. Uh, not as good as pre-2020 shutdown, but I guess nothing is nowadays. If you didn't know, Royal Caribbean does theme nights in the main dining room from French night, Caribbean night, Mexican night, Italian night, and their welcome aboard menu. So each night you'll have a different theme and each one of the food options will be part of that theme. Again, some of our food was good, some of it was not so good. Mexican night is terrible and I'm glad to hear that they're trying Asian night in replace of it on certain sailings out of Galveston. But overall, the main dining room was decent. Let's talk about some of the stuff about this particular sailing. So if you didn't know you sail in the winter, the weather's going to be bad or not as good as the summer. And we had some really not okay weather. It was raining. It was windy. As you can tell by looking at that swimming pool, it was really rough. And when they put the sick bags in the stairwells, you know it's not a good time at sea. And like I said earlier, that bad weather is a definite theme of this cruise. We like cruising in January because there's less people, but this is just something you're going to have to deal with if you do that. Anybody want to jump in the wave pool? Not me. So our first stop on this cruise was supposed to be Costa Maya, Mexico. And I say supposed to because when I woke up in the morning on the day that we were supposed to go to Costa Maya, I felt the ship turning around. And it turned out that Costa Maya was closed due to bad weather. So we weren't going to be able to do the aviary tour at the Costa Maya port like we planned to or go to like the Crazy Lobster or some of the other restaurants in town that we wanted to try. We'll just have to do that next time we go to Costa Maya. All right, so what did we do instead? Uh, the ship did figure eights and circles in the passage between Cozumel and the Mexican mainland until we got a parking spot in Cozumel. It's kind of cool. Nicole and I kind of just explored the ship and did some things around during this time. We noticed that the Studio B sign was broken the day before and look, they were already fixing it, which was cool. I heard a lot about make sure you go to the main dining room for lunch when they have the Royal Burger on the menu and it was just a Windjammer hamburger and it was not good. So maybe they have different versions of it, but the version I got was not very good. So later in the day, we were told by the captain on an overhead page that around 3.30, 4 o'clock, we would dock at the International Dock in Cozumel as soon as Apex, Celebrity Apex, moved out of the parking spot. Uh, what we were going to do is a overnight stop in Cozumel rather than going to Costa Maya. This is the first time that Nicole and I ever had an overnight stop. So, but for us, it just meant that we got to get off the ship and walk around Cozumel on the first night and then go back to bed and then get up early for our excursion in Cozumel. We were parked next to Celebrity Ascent, which is one of the newest ships in the Celebrity line. Um, we definitely want to try out those ships. Ascent, Beyond, and the new ship Excel are supposed to be amazing. If you didn't know, Cozumel has three cruise ports. They have one downtown where some of the smaller ships 
like Enchantment of the Seas will dock at. They have the middle one, which is where Royal Caribbean usually sends its larger ships. Royal Caribbean includes Celebrity. And then they have the uh, end one, which is where Carnival sends their ships and Princess ships to as well. The one that Royal Caribbean uses is the International Cruise Dock, and it has a shopping center uh, right after security that you can kind of walk through and do a bunch of shopping and possibly eat some food as well. Of course, Cozumel kind of has the a trinity of cruise ship shops. They have Diamonds International, they have Carrie Aloha, Del Sol, and then now the new one that they're adding to that is Effie, which is on a lot of Royal Caribbean ships as well. We like to find these shops on the ports that we go to uh, just because it's funny and you hear about them so much, at least you used to back in the day when you would cruise before the shutdowns. Nicole and I just kind of explored the Cozumel port and all the shops. Um, we did some shopping and just kind of walked around and uh, just enjoyed being off the ship for a little bit on that first night in Cozumel. Um, the port has a duty-free shop, it has a lot of knickknacks, it has uh, plenty of places to buy Mexican vanilla and alcohol and just about anything you would normally find in a cruise port. Um, we usually just walk around and, and kind of check some stuff out. Uh, you can also get food here, there's a Margaritaville and a few other restaurants as well. Nicole and I booked an excursion for Cozumel on the Shore Excursions Group website. We booked the Jungle Jeep Adventure to the Jade Caverns with a snorkel option, and this was about $80 per person for this excursion. This excursion was kind of a compromise between the two of us. I wanted to drive a Jeep through the jungle, Nicole wanted to go snorkeling, so we did both. Or we thought we were going to do both. So we got up early and then walked across the street uh, from the International Cruise Port to over to the Mayan Plaza which is where there's a gigantic Mayan pyramid in the middle of it. We had to meet our guide here and then wait for other patrons. And then we were told that the other people that we were supposed to do this tour with didn't show up. So our guide said he was going to give us a personalized tour of Cozumel Island, which sadly meant I was not driving the Jeep like I wanted to do. I was kind of disappointed about this. I really wanted to drive the Jeep, but I wasn't going to let it uh, ruin our experience with this excursion on Cozumel. Our guide was really good. He took us to a few of the cenotes around the, uh, the cruise ship area, which these are essentially underwater caves with natural spring water. Uh, he told us that this cave right here actually goes really far underneath the ground and then basically connects to another cenote and a few other places and it just gave us basically a history lesson of the area as well. I had to get a video of this little crab walking through the jungle. It was really unexpected because you normally expect to see crabs, I don't know, in the ocean. Uh, but just to have one walking next to us in the jungle area was kind of cool. From the cenotes, we drove south, basically to the southeast side of the island, where the waves were really big and powerful, and it was actually really windy. The first stop on this side of the island was to a little mojito stand, which was like the only stand in the area, and we had some real fresh homemade mojitos. Um, some of the best mojitos we've ever had on basically in any of our travels anywhere. This guy was a master at making mojitos. The next thing we did was kind of drive into the jungle and our guide made a stop at I guess just a fork in the road. He's like, do you want to try a real Mexican pepper? Of course I said yes. I mean this is one of the reasons why you travel to try new foods and to basically have experiences to kind of a story to tell in the future. Wasn't really expecting our guide to kind of walk into the jungle to find one of these peppers. And what he brought to us, I wasn't expecting either. It was the smallest pepper I've ever seen. I can normally handle hot and spicy foods with really no problem, but this little pepper got me. And it's no wonder, I googled it afterwards and it was listed as very hot online. So he definitely got me. 
One of the next places that we went to was a cave system or a cavern system where we were told that Mayans used to live. And there was a lot of Mayan artifacts and different displays within this cave. It was really cool to see. Do I know if this stuff is real or not? I, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna take his word for it. it. But it was interesting, especially the history of the area that he told us. There was also some bats in these caves and one flew at me and I ran away and Nicole laughed at me really hard. Some of the wildlife we saw was pretty cool. The guide got really excited about this bird. Apparently it's a great curacao and he said it's extremely rare to see. So we stopped to watch it walk through the woods. I, I, I've never seen a bird like this before. It reminded me of a dinosaur. Um, really cool, a unique experience for us. After we explored the jungle a little bit more, we decided to head back into town. The next thing on the agenda was a tequila tasting with something that Nicole was really looking forward to. At the tequila tasting, they gave us a bunch of different types of tequila, everything from like your standard tequilas all the way up to your flavored tequilas with strawberry and other fruits and stuff. Um, Nicole really liked this strawberry one, so we bought that. I don't know if we spent too much money on it and you can get it on Amazon back home, but she really liked it. Now we were heading to do the snorkeling. I was hungry, so we stopped to get some street tacos at a little resort across the street from the snorkeling area. The tacos were pretty good. I wish I had more uh, hot sauce on them. Maybe I needed to go out in the jungle and find some more peppers for it. Now it was time for what Nicole was really looking forward to, which was the snorkeling. We walked across the street with our snorkel gear, and this was part of the Coral Reef National Park inside Cozumel. Uh, a really nice area, even though it was really not beachy, more coral. And he had to find a spot to kind of walk into the water. The wind had been blowing, so there was a lot of waves, but the water was warm and it was actually pretty shallow. You could basically walk waist deep way out. Um, I didn't really partake in the snorkeling. I'd rather just stand in the water and kind of enjoy being there. Nicole absolutely loved the snorkeling. She saw so many fish and different types of fish and wildlife out there. Um, we used our GoPro and the footage was really good from it. So if you want to do some snorkeling in Cozumel, there's plenty of excursions that will take you there. It was a good time, even though I didn't partake in it, but Nicole had a blast doing the snorkeling out there in the water. After the snorkeling, we went back to the ship, and that was kind of our end of our time in Cozumel. In my opinion, a good cruise is made up of really good onboard activities for you to participate in. This is one of the things that made Odyssey of the Seas stand out so much on our Greek Isle cruise because cruise director Mike did an amazing job on that cruise. And it's also the inverse of that when you think about some of the cruises right after the, the shutdowns like on our cruise aboard Adventure of the Seas where there wasn't very many people on board and they didn't want to bring people together so it was kind of whatever. But I'm happy to say the onboard activities on Voyager of the Seas were really good and some of the best parts of this cruise overall. Cruise director Rob did an amazing job of making sure there was plenty of stuff to do for everybody. Um, and I'm happy to say that Crazy Quest was on this cruise after we didn't get to do that on either of our European cruises. If you didn't know what Crazy Quest is, it's essentially a game show where everybody participates and it's adults only. So there's a lot of weird stuff that happens during that game show. Um, we really enjoy Crazy Quest. Make sure you check it out when you're on your cruise. 
And if you wanted to do ice skating, there was a lot of time slots available. There was a ton of opportunity to make sure that you had your chance to go ice skating. We saw tons of people doing it. It was very popular on our cruise. The Star Lounge is where most of the onboard activities took place besides trivia and some of the piano bar type stuff. Um, this lounge is right above the Royal Theater and this is where Perfect Couple it's where Battle of the Sexes. This is where your Harry Potter trivia took place. Uh, they have live bands playing there. The Star Lounge is essentially the place to be on this cruise ship. It, it was packed almost every single night. We highly recommend getting to any event in the Star Lounge early so you can get a good seat. A few times that we ended up there for like karaoke and stuff, we had to stand in the back of the room and it wasn't as good as if you were sitting near the stage or the dance floor area. So Star Lounge is awesome. Tons of good activities in the Star Lounge as well. And of course, on Voyager of the Seas, they do the parties in the promenade. Uh, we had the 70s party during our cruise. Sometimes they do the 80s party. It was uh, really good. So if you want to get shake your group thing, Make sure you join the, the party on the promenade when they do it. It's usually on night three. And one of the cool things that we saw on this cruise versus some of the other cruises we've been on is they actually showed movies in the Royal Theater. I don't know if it's a special setup on Voyager, but it was actually really cool to have that huge space. The audio, it, 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 was, it was awesome. Uh, we watched uh, Indiana Jones for a little bit while we were there. As with any decent Royal Caribbean ship, the sports zone has a ton of things to do in it. On Voyager of the Seas, there's the basketball court. They have a really, I guess, kind of basic miniature golf course as well back here. And during one of its recent remodels, they added two of the Perfect Storm water slides as well. Um, and it wouldn't be a Royal Caribbean ship. I mean, at least a newer Royal Caribbean ship without the Flow Rider. It's in the way back of the ship. You have the rock climbing wall. There's just a bunch of stuff to do. In, when the weather's nice, this area is usually got a ton of people in it. I'm having the most fun that they could possibly have on a cruise ship. So if you're looking for something a little bit more physical, like water slides and basketball and rock climbing, Voyager of the Seas has you covered. Uh, if the weather's good, that is. If it's the middle of January and the waves are really bad, don't expect this area to have a ton of people and a ton of stuff to do. Now, if you watch a lot of our videos, you know I like to talk about the merch that's available on Royal Caribbean ships and specifically in the brand and logo shop because we all love our souvenirs. Now, Voyager of the Seas is an older ship, but it does look like they are updating the merchandise available. It doesn't seem like it's all the scratchy, older design, generic t-shirts. There's actually some really nice stuff here and a ton of uh, Crown and Acre Society shirts that I wasn't expecting to see and I haven't seen on any other ship. So if you're looking for, for a souvenir or something to take home, a nice magnet or a good t-shirt, there's actually some decent options on Voyager of the Seas. Check it out, it's in the logo shop right on the promenade. Now let's talk about the storm. Nicole and I have been on a bunch of different cruise ships and done a bunch of different sailings. Uh, we've been through some storms like on our trip to Alaska, but we have never been through a storm like what we experienced on Voyager of the Seas. We came out of the second time we went to the ice skating show and noticed that there were signs on the doors on deck four telling you not to go outside, basically closed due to weather. So the wind jammer and uh, food started falling off of the buffet and we have never seen that before. The ship was rocking pretty good and then kind of listing a little bit to each side. Uh, it was very loud when the food pans would just come crashing off of the buffet tables. This little clip right here is kind of funny because you can see the pin and my soda kind of slide across the counter there. And then a giant section of like the bus station where they put all the dirty trays and stuff in kind of fell over and you see that lady how much, how much the ship is lean, leaning based on how they're walking. Just unusual and out of nowhere, the ship started rocking this bad. We've never experienced anything like it. It was like a theme park ride. It, that's what it felt like. It, every time the ship would lean to one side, you're like, am I at Disney or Universal 
or am I on a cruise ship right now? The wind was howling outside and the ship was rocking, the water in the pool was coming out. There was waves crashing up to like the fifth, sixth, some people said the seventh deck. It was an incredible storm, something we've never seen before on a cruise ship. And it kind of makes sense when you're cruising in January in the Gulf of Mexico. You can't expect good seas during that time. We had a balcony on deck 10, and uh, as you can tell, the drainage on the balcony wasn't that great. A lot of the rain and wind was blowing water onto our balcony, and it was collecting. We had probably four inches of water on there, and it started to come underneath the door on into the carpet. Uh, we had to put a couple towels down to kind of soak it up, and then later I did my best to kind of see if the drain was clogged and try to get it to drain a little bit. It was really funny to stand in the room and kind of look out the balcony door while standing straight up, looking straight ahead, and seeing nothing but ocean and no sky. Uh, the ship was listing that much. It was definitely felt like a theme park ride. Now the other thing is uh, displays fell over, a bunch of stuff in the liquor store broke and unfortunately six uh, slot machines fell over in the casino and I guess hit some folks. Uh, some people were injured, uh, we were not, uh, but it was probably scary for a lot of people. For us, it was uh, a lot of people watching and it gave us a real story to tell about this cruise. It made it very memorable. We'd never experienced a storm like this and we hope, I guess, never to experience another one like this, but overall, it made this trip very unique for us. So that wraps up our cruise aboard Voyager of the Seas. It was a pretty fun cruise with some really bad weather. Overall, we did have a really good time. And we would recommend Voyager of the Seas for your next cruise and this Western Caribbean itinerary of going to Costa Maya and Cozumel. Just be mindful that if you're sailing in the winter months, you may get some rough seas like we did, but even the bad weather didn't ruin the time that we had. Now, you're in Galveston, or if you're taking a cruise out of Galveston, you're looking for some other things to do either before or after your cruise, we went to the Moody Gardens after we got off the ship. If you're ever on Galveston Island and you see the gigantic pyramids, that is Moody Gardens, and what is there is actually an aquarium and a rainforest display. You can actually go to both the aquarium and the rainforest for $56 per person, which I felt was pretty worth it. Nicole and I spent several hours exploring the Moody Gardens. We really enjoyed the aquarium. It was much better than the Florida Aquarium that's in Tampa. The rainforest display is just a unique experience. It reminded us a little bit of the Dallas World Aquarium, which is kind of a similar setup. But overall, we recommend the Moody Gardens and we would definitely go back. We had a lot of fun there and saw a ton of animals. Before embarking on our five hour drive home, we went over to Miller's Seawall Grill because we were hungry and it was by the beach. The food there was very good. We tried a bunch of different types of seafood and I really liked the Crab Benedict. We recommend it, so if you're in Galveston and you're looking for a really good place to eat, can't go wrong with Miller's Seawall Grill. So that'll wrap up our voyage on Voyager of the Seas. It was a really good ship. We enjoyed our time and it was a good vacation, minus the bad weather of January. If you have any questions about this trip or any of our other trips, please leave them in the comments section below. And as always, make sure you like and subscribe.